humans have peered into the universe, pondering whether we were truly alone. We've imagined civilizations light years away, sent out radio pulses into the shadows, and looked strangely at anomalies, hoping for just one undeniable sign. And now, we may have it. What began as a routine observation of an obscure interstellar object, 3 I Atlas, has turned into what might be the most terrifying astronomical discovery in human history. It wasn't the object's origin that surprised scientists. It wasn't its trajectory, its brightness, or its strange silence. It was the result within it. The James Webb Space Telescope, silently orbiting miles from Earth, picked up something that shattered every expectation. Not a comet, not a rock, not a relic, but something that behaved like it was alive. As astronomers dug deeper, what they uncovered forced them to abandon everything they believed they knew about space, life, and our place in the universe. Because 3 I Atlas might not just be traversing our solar system, it might be studying us, and more terrifyingly, it might be reacting to us. From the moment 3 I Atlas was spotted near the edge of the solar system, something about it disturbed astronomers. Its brightness was unnatural, far too intense for an object its size. Normally, comets brighten because of outgassing, materials that have frozen vaporized as they approach the sun, creating glowing stories of dust and gas. But Atlas was different. It shone with a piercing, clean precision a constant, to stable, as if there was no reflection of light at all, but light generated. That caught the attention of NASA and ESA almost immediately. Telescopes from Chile to Hawaii started following it, but it was the James Webb, whose job it was to address the more in-depth inquiries, with its unprecedented infrared sensitivity, that wasn't just looking for light, it was measuring heat, mapping the object's thermal fingerprint. And what it found was shocking. Atlas was not just warm from the sun's rays, it was emitting heat from deep within, focused at its center, radiating outward in pulsing waves. This kind of internal heat suggested something far beyond geology. The pulses were erratic enough to appear rhythmic, natural, yet sufficiently structured to imply design. It was as if the object was living, breathing not in a biological sense, perhaps, but certainly in a mechanical or energetic one. And from that moment on, the scientific community stopped referring to 3 I Atlas as a comet. Some had begun calling it the visitor behind closed doors. As Webb continued its scans, other instruments joined in. Radio telescopes began picking up a strange electromagnetic haze surrounding the object. At first, it was dismissed as background noise, static the kind of interference every observer from deep space has seen a thousand times. But something in that static was off. Teams at MIT and Harvard ran Fourier transforms, mathematical breakdowns to isolate patterns within the chaos. And buried within that noise, they found it, a signal that repeats. Not the regular thump of a pulsar or the decaying hum of radiation. This was something else. The pulses were spaced at almost perfect intervals but with just enough variation to mimic language, or at the very least, intent. It was subtle, so subtle that it could have been ignored. However, the more they looked at it, the clearer it got. This was not a random emission. It wasn't something Atlas was simply leaking into the void. It was broadcasting. And worse, it might have been listening. The narrow band it used matched frequencies close to our own communication and guidance mechanisms. The signal changed slightly when solar wind increased or when observatories coordinated their efforts across the globe. It was behaving as if it were aware of its surroundings, adapting in real time. That's when whispers began to circulate. This did not come from nature, it was reacting. Then came the flare. The object remained relatively stable for weeks, drifting through space with its pulsing heat and silent signal. Until, without warning, one day, Atlas erupted. In a span of less than two minutes, a 40% increase in brightness occurred a sudden, violent eruption unlike any ever seen in a natural body. But it wasn't chaotic. It was perfectly symmetrical, almost surgical. At the same time, Webb noticed a spike in thermal energy, a heat bloom that radiated outward and then stabilized as though something inside the object had switched on. Scientists were taken aback. This was not sublimating ice. This was not pressure building from trapped gases. This was the activation of a system. It was the difference between catching a campfire in the wind and someone flipping a light switch. Also chilling was the timing. The flare occurred as Atlas passed a specific point in the solar system, a region near Earth's orbital plane. It was as if it had crossed a line and reacted. 
Immediately after the flare, its thermal signature changed permanently. The object was no longer the same. Something inside had awakened. And just days later, astronomers noticed something else. Atlas had altered its course. Objects in space don't just change direction. Comets don't steer. They obey the laws of gravity, radiation pressure, and momentum. But Atlas was now drifting off its predicted trajectory. Not wildly, but with measured precision. It was initially just a slight drift, a few arcsecs here and there. But over the next few days, the deviation became undeniable. It was as if the object had corrected its path, and not just randomly. Its new course brought it closer to Earth's orbital neighborhood, not a direct collision, nothing that would trigger planetary defense protocols, but close enough to be noticed. Close enough to raise alarms? Analysts pored over the data. Maybe it was a gas jet, they suggested, or maybe a miscalculation, but nothing matched. The trajectory shift occurred hours after the flare. The timing was to precise. It was as though the flare and the correction to the course were connected as if one had triggered the other. And the most unnerving possibility of all, that whatever was inside three atlas saw us, analyzed us, and adjusted its position in response. That we weren't looking at an object anymore, but a system, a construct, something that wasn't just passing through, but performing a mission. After the trajectory shift, a new anomaly emerged. The results of James Webb's spectroetry revealed oscillations, but not in temperature or light. These were oscillations in electromagnetic field strength, rhythmic fluctuations emanating from the object's core that resembled something scientists had only seen once before in biological systems. Dr. Leona Koresh, a biophysicist employed as a consultant, immediately recognized the pattern. The frequency of the fluctuations mimicked that of cellular respiration, specifically the oxygen cycle in microbial life. Of course, no one was suggesting that Atlas had lungs, but the fact remained, the object was cycling energy with the timing, regularity, and efficiency of something living or worse, something designed to mimic life. When supercooled plasma simulations were run to test alternative explanations, none replicated the waveform. The conclusion was equally bizarre as it was simple. This pattern could only emerge from an adaptive, energy-regulating system. Whether made of organic or synthetic components, it was no comet. And then, as if aware it had been seen, three atlas went silent. Its pulses radio, infrared, thermal flatlined. The electromagnetic oscillations disappeared. Webb couldn't detect a single fluctuation. Earth-based telescopes lost lock on its light signature. It appeared as though the object had simply powered down or cloaked itself. For six hours, the world's most advanced observatory stared into space and saw nothing where Atlas should have been not darkness, not shadow, but void. That silence hit differently. It wasn't passive, it was intentional. Scientists described it as to perfect, as if the object had answered their inquiry with withdrawal. It was no longer sending signals, it was hiding. And then, as suddenly as it vanished, it came back online, brighter than ever. The heat signature surge. But this time, there was something new embedded in the signal, a pattern, a modulation so complex it took days to decode. And when they did, it left everyone shaken. It was a mirror of one of our earliest Earth-based satellite broadcasts, an old analog telemetry stream from 1983. Somehow, Atlas had captured it, stored it, and was now repeating it back. But why, around the same time, James Webb obtained its clearest imaging yet of the Atlas, surrounded by a dust trail? It revealed something that obliterated every last assumption. Within the debris was not random rock and ice. Instead, Webb detected fragments of structured alloys made of molecules, including a lattice of vanadium, nickel, and rare earth elements that simply do not occur naturally. Not only were these metals ultra-pure, but their arrangement was engineered. Dr. Raphael Song, a materials engineer, ran the molecular maps through known human databases. The configuration was nearly identical to experimental materials being studied in advanced AI circuitry. The fragments weren't chaotic leftovers from space formation. 
They were discarded parts, components, evidence of wear, of maintenance. It wasn't a comet. It wasn't even a ship in the conventional sense. It was a machine shedding its skin as it moved. And each discarded item told the same story. Three Atlas was not only alive, but also breaking down. And that begged the most disturbing question of all. If it's deteriorating, what happens when it finally stops? Then came the final piece, the moment when researchers stopped debating and started panicking. Days after Atlas resumed its signals, ground-based observatories picked up an atmospheric anomaly on the moon, a thin layer of never-before-seen ionized particles. 